on the Tenhudud. Greetings, dear friends. My name is Galina Angarova, and I come from the Iherit Nation of the Buryat people in Siberia. I'm delivering this message from the territory of the Ohlone people, where I live and work, and which is now known the San Francisco Bay Area. Due the, to the high wind and fire alert, I'm speaking from home, not from the natural setting as other speakers. I'm an indigenous rights activist and the executive director of Cultural Survival. It's a 48 year old indigenous rights organization that advocates for indigenous people's rights and supports indigenous communities' self-determination, cultures and political resilience since 1972. I was born and raised in a traditional community where storytelling, traditional ceremonies, tending to the land and communicating with our ancestors was part of our daily lives. I truly believe that we indigenous peoples are key partners in land and biodiversity protection and sustainability. I want to speak not only to the importance of biological diversity, but rather, rather to the importance of biocultural diversity, which recognizes the equal role of humans and nature in this symbiosis called Mother Earth. It is an interdependent relationship between people and place, culture and ecology, and they cannot exist without one another. Biodiversity is tied to cultural diversity and they rely on each other to exist and thrive. As indigenous peoples, we have co-evolved with our landscapes and the landscapes have co-evolved with us. We are inseparable. The Amazon wouldn't be the Amazon if there hadn't been a relationship that has existed since the time immemorial between the Amazon and its people. We indigenous peoples are the experts of our own environments. We carry the knowledge of our land and biodiversity in our languages. Our languages reflect the silhouettes of our landscapes and nature is mimicked in our sounds, in our dances, and in our songs. Furthermore, our worldview, our traditional knowledge, our cultures and cosmovisions are all reflected in our languages. Among indigenous cultures, every language emerges from a specific place. Inuit people have dozens of words for snow. Polynesian languages have dozens of words for water ripples. There are over 4,000 indigenous languages in the world, and all of them have traditional knowledge about bird biodiversity protection embedded in them. There are over 5,000 varieties of potatoes in the Andes, and this diversity is a result of the Indian indigenous communities and nature working together. And this is why biodiversity cannot exist without cultural and language diversity. My first understanding of the natural environment came from my grandmother. I witnessed when my grandmother would wake up in the morning and would know the, uh, the weather for the day whether it would be raining or snowing, it would be windy. She would know what the harvest of wild strawberries and wild blueberries would be like in the spring, way before the harvest in the fall. She knew so many things that are hidden from the regular eye just because she was off that land. In fact, she was more just part of the land. She was the land and the land was her. The land and I share the DNA and I carry the microbiome of the land I live on. And just like my grandmother, I'm the land and the land is me. The intimate relationship to your land and your environment is the basis of our indigenous worldview, which in its turn provides us with a, with a set of instructions, values, and principles. And they are reciprocity, prosperity, equity, humility, trust, relationships, and respect. We indigenous peoples learn from the land, the mother of all mothers, to reciprocate when we tend to the land. And she gives back to us in the form of harvest. 
we take only what we need and give back to the life force that nourishes us. And that translates into prosperity and abundance. Indigenous peoples understand that we humans are not the only or the highest intelligence on this planet. And that comes from the place of humility. It teaches us to treat people, animals, plants, rocks, rivers, mountains with respect and love and equity. Our actions and solutions are deeply rooted in our worldviews and values and informed by our millennia old relationship to the land. As indigenous peoples, we have a gift to the world. It is the knowledge and understanding of how to live with the environments in a reciprocal way that upholds both the spiritual and ecological integrity of the land, protecting and sustaining by the biological diversity of the place. Recent research demonstrates that although indigenous peoples around the globe uh, represent only 6.2% of the global population, they manage and hold tenure for almost 25% of the, uh, the world's land surface. And those territories are home to almost 80% of the remaining biological diversity. When indigenous peoples' rights are respected and upheld, they're able to steward these lands in ways that prevent fossil fuels, um, extraction, maintain carbon capturing forests, and protect biological diversity. But to sustain our environments indefinitely, indigenous peoples must not have not just a seat at the table, but their leadership and expertise should be centered, trusted, and honored. Although indigenous peoples have long been excluded from the conservation movement, both physically evicted from the conservation lands and politically excluded from international climate negotiations and discussions, more than ever, it is being recognized that indigenous people's leadership in forest protection, traditional agriculture and traditional knowledge on biodiversity is crucial uh, for our continued existence as species on this planet. Moreover, social and environmental benefits and consequences are interdependent and interrelated. Planting a few acres of trees have will have very little impact on reversing climate change if our collective behaviors continue to extract, exploit, and commodify our environments. Rather, we must address the root causes of the planetary crisis that we're in, a disconnection between the human beings and the planet. Indigenous wisdom, leadership, and our ancestral knowledge can guide the world towards a shift in mindset about the relationship to the land, bringing collective change behavior and supporting long-term resiliency and sustainability of the natural world. Thank you. Bye, Allah.